Hi, I'm Kim the Paper Traveler. I've been on vacation all this week. Been doing a little reading and a little bit of work outside. As you can see, I've got all my garlic dug up. I'm just waiting for it to cure. It has been extremely hot this week, so I haven't got as much done as I'd hoped to as I start sweating. So the mornings pretty much is when I've been working outside. Uh, the evenings are just so muggy. And even inside the house, it's just been really hot. Uh, we keep our air conditioner on 80. We don't like overtaxing the system. So just kind of been taking it easy, been reading a little bit, playing some video games. But one thing that I usually do while I'm off on vacation is going to half price books. And I'm not doing that this year, but I have that book shopping craving. I really do. So I thought an inexpensive way to do this, because I'm trying not to spend as much money, is to go to a couple of Goodwill stores. Now, I've been wanting to buy uh, a couple of dresses for summer anyway, so I'm going to look for that and then look in their book section. If you've ever shopped at the Goodwill stores for books, they are super cheap, 99 cents for their books. That's one thing they really haven't raised their prices on. Uh, their clothes, they've kind of gotten expensive on some of their clothes here lately. But So I'm going to go to a couple and see if I see anything. Uh, the last couple of trips I've had, I've had really good luck. So you never know, but you'll find. So I thought I would do a little vlog called a used book haul. That is if I find anything worth showing you. So. I'm going to take off today, go to two different locations. They are both about, I don't know, 13 to 15 miles from where I live. Both of them are in two different towns. So I'll be doing a little bit of road trip today. And I'm going to start uh, listening to one of my books for Super Size Summer, Wanderers by Chuck Wendig. So I'll start listening to that on audiobook. I had noticed, uh, I had mentioned that I'm going to do a combination of reading and listen to the audiobook on that. So let's head out. Okay, I'm here at the first one. Uh, I may or may not record why I'm in there. I'm a little shy about doing that in public, so we'll see what happens. Well, this is an unplanned purchase. I actually found two needlepoint kits that are unopened. Well, I had some pretty good luck in there. Um, I found a couple of horror books, uh, literary fiction, a cookbook. Uh, I couldn't really record in there. Um, <laughs> there was a, a guy that was around the bookshelves. Um, and when I did record, my footage was sideways. So, <laughs> so much for that idea. I'm going to head off to the next Google store. I know I won't be able to record in this one because they are always crowded in this one. So I'm going to head out and see what I find at this one. We all just came back from that second store and unfortunately I did not see anything in there. There was a, a guy that was looking through the books uh, while I was looking and he started talking to me. Usually I'm like, leave me alone, you know, but he was okay. He was cool. Uh, he was actually looking for some Reader's Digest condensed versions, and he was talking about how they, he has trouble coming across them anymore. And yeah, I, come to think of it, yeah, I don't see them like you used to, uh, maybe in certain stores. Well, this is going to be my next stop. No luck finding any other thrift stores nearby. So I've had uh, good luck finding some things in here as far as books. Of course, I love looking at the other stuff too. Of course, I'm gonna pay more than a dollar for them, but they're still not very expensive. Oh, that's so cute. I used to collect those. Well, this caught my eye, but it's unfortunately $15, but it is so cool. This is a series I haven't read yet, but I've been collecting them. 
and this is the only one I don't have and I keep trying to find it on hardcover but no luck so far. It certainly is a treasure hunt when you come out of these. You have all these things in here and then all of a sudden you'll see some books tucked away in there so I'm gonna check these out. <sighs> In a place like that, my feet always tire out before I can look at everything. So I am ready to head home now. I did find two books in there. No, I found more than that, but I I purchased two books for my collection. They're authors I've been collecting already anyway. I had to restrain myself and some of them, they sounded really good. They have lots of books in there and the little tucked in areas as you can see on the video. But uh, yeah, it was nice going in there. It's been a little while. So I'll head home and I'll show you what I got today. Okay, I'm back now. Uh, it is now later on in the day though. I may have come home and taken a two hour nap. <laughs> I guess I was more tired than I thought. Old people problems, right? Um, I have 13 books to share with you. Uh, three of these though are ones I hauled previously, but they were free. So I'll share those with you too. I'm also going to do my draw for the Viewer's Choice TBR. If you don't know what that is, I'll link the video, but basically what it is, I ask my viewers to recommend some of their favorite books. And if they were ones I own, I'm gonna put them in a TBR jar to read. So far, I have read Salem's Lot and Betty, and I've enjoyed both of those. So we'll see what I'll be reading for the next quarter. I'm doing it every quarter until I get them all read. So let's get started with this book haul. I'll show you the free ones first. I have a coworker that enjoys reading. She reads when she works out on her treadmill every morning. I don't know how she does that. She doesn't read the same kind of books I do, though. She reads mystery thrillers, but sometimes she'll bring bags of books in that she's finished with to share with others. Uh, and I did find one that I thought looked interesting. It's The Walls Around Us by Nova Ren Suma. And this is the author of Imaginary Girls. And I, I've, I've heard of that book before. Oni's dead because of what happened out behind the theater in the tunnel made out of trees. She's dead because she got sent to that place upstate, locked up with those monsters. And she got sent there because of me. So I thought that sounded interesting. And I like the kind of creepy cover there. The next book is one that I found at my library. As you enter the doors of my library, there's a shelf on the left where they have books that you can just take for free. And I saw this book. Uh, I've heard of this author before. Sinclair Lewis Babbitt. And this is considered Sinclair Lewis's greatest novel. It's a satire of the American social landscape created a sensation upon its 1922 publication. So this is one that I probably won't get to soon, but I'm going to put it, I have a special shelf for like classic type of books and I'll be putting that on my shelf there and incorporate it into my eventual reading. The next one is uh, Where I Work. That that lady that I was talking about, she struck up a conversation with somebody and they got talking about books and everything. So next thing you know, this guy, he's bringing a whole box of books in. Uh, he didn't know what type of books we read. So there was a little bit of everything in there. Now there were some that I already owned. There were some George R. R. Martin's, uh, there was a Stephen King book in there, but uh, Kim Follett. And then there's mystery thrillers and all of that. So we all kind of dived in and see what we wanted. Uh, I saw one. Uh, I think my sister would enjoy reading this too. It's A Dog's Way Home by W. Bruce Cameron. Now he is, he has a lot of dog publication type of books. Uh, one of his most popular ones is A Dog's Purpose. I've not read that book. But there was a movie adaptation of it. Oh my gosh, I cried. <laughs> I cried with that movie. It's so heartbreaking. If you're a dog lover, you need to see that movie. But um, I thought this was in that box there. I thought I would uh, incorporate in my reading sometime. Now for the haul from the first thrift store. That's where I found the most books. I, I was just 
Oh man, it was amazing how many books I found. This first book makes me think of Tammy from Believe in Your Shelf. <laughs> She recently did a, a video series. Uh, she did books that her daughter recommended her, and then she did one with her mom, and then one with, with her dad. They would recommend books to her, and she would read them and see how she likes them. Well, the one she did with her mom, her mom kept trying to get her to read Hamnet, and she kept saying, no, I don't want to read that book. <laughs> uh, and I, I do think, once upon a time, that I did check this out at the library when it was all the buzz, but I just never did read it. Uh, so, Tammy wound up liking this book. So, I thought I would go ahead and pick this up. It was 99 cents, y'all, <laughs> at, at the thrift store. So, I'll give it a try sometime. The next one, I had never heard of this before. I've heard of this author, though. He is a booktube darling for two of his books, Swan Song and Voice Life, but I have never heard of this one, and I think it's part of a series. It speaks the Nightbird by Robert McCammon. Um, this is like a witchy type of read, and supposedly this is two books in one. You can see how chunky that one is. So I thought that would be interesting to see if I like that. Um, you know, when witches were persecuted for their beliefs. So, yeah, I want to incorporate that into my reading. I'll try that. I mean, everyone loves his other books. And the next two books are literary fiction books. Uh, I, this one was made into a movie. Uh, the Cider House Rules by John Irving. I have heard of that. I don't know a lot about it. I know it was well received. They did have a couple other John Irving books. I don't remember what they were called, but I wasn't sure if I was going to like his writing, so I didn't want to go ahead and get those other ones and take up more shelf space. But I thought I would try this one, at least, it being one of the most popular books that he has. Give that a try sometime. And another one that I had heard about for a while, Cutting for Stone by Abraham Verges. Next is a fantasy book, and I usually don't find fantasy books at this Goodwill store, so I was really surprised to find this. This is Dave Eddings, Malorian, Volume 2. I had hauled Volume 1 sometime along the way. It might have been half price books or something. I don't remember. Uh, but <laughs> supposedly I'm supposed to read Bagariot series before reading this one. But for 99 cents, I have it for my collection whenever that time comes. And the next one I got was the cookbook. This is the Spirit of Christmas cookbook. I love cookbooks. And I had to really restrain myself not to buy cookbooks today. But this is part of a book series that I have collected over the years. Uh, the Spirit of Christmas has... Oh, gosh, I don't remember how many volumes of it I have. But in their pages, they have everything celebrating Christmas. They'll have craft projects, uh, ideas for decorating your home, and actually recipes. So I didn't realize they actually just had a separate cookbook, too. So I had to get that one. Now, the next two are horror books, and I was actually really shocked to find these, too. I'm so happy to find these. I've heard a lot of great things about this one especially. Nos for R2. I never know how to pronounce that exactly. This is by Joe Hill. I love this. This is a deckled edge book. It just really feels good in my hands. I've heard this talked a lot about on booktube and people just really, really enjoy this. So I'm going to incorporate it into my reading sometime. I don't know when. <laughs> oh my gosh, so many books, a little time. And it says on the blurb on the back says, Welcome to Christmas Land. I see I didn't even realize it was based around Christmas time. What would you do for a lifetime pass to a place where every morning it's Christmas and unhappiness is against the law? Don't give up on wonder. Don't give up on dreams. We're looking for go-getters who love children, aren't afraid of adventures. Oh, 
What's the blood splatters for? Hmm. And the next one is an author. He's known for his weird horror type of books. I've never read anything from him before, but this is a chonker. It's going to be a while before I got to this one, but I was, I was delighted to add it to my collection. Whoops, almost dropped it. <laughs> uh, Imagica by Clive Barker. Let me know if you've read this. And, oh gosh, how many pages is this anyway? 820 or something? Yeah, 820 some pages. I, I do have his book Weave World also. I've not read it, but it is a chunk or two. Well, now I'll get to the last two books I got at the Antique Mall. And I cannot believe it. I didn't walk out with anything more than books. A lot of times I get like household stuff and antique things. I just love looking at antique things. So I did really good <laughs> not spending a lot of money there. Just found these two books. Now, these were, I think, $3.50 a piece on these. And they are both authors that I own books from and wanted more from. The first one is... Diana Gabaldon, Lord John and the Private Matter. Now this is sort of part of the Outlander series. And as you get to a certain point in the Outlander books, you become acquainted with a character named Lord John Gray. And there is a spinoff of books with this character. Now she had written a, a novella originally that was published before this one that was published like in a combination books anthology of some sort and uh, there are several other books evidently in this series that ha are in the anthology type of things anyway so this one actually is considered the first book in the Lord John series um it's funny though Diana Gabaldon as you know her Outlander books are whew, and she originally intended to for this to be a novella. Well, it wound up being 300 and some pages, which for a lot of authors, you know, that's normal. But for her, that's novella compared to, to what she comes out with usually. But uh, yeah, she has a gift with words. I do own um, another book in this series. I'll show that to you real quick. This is my Outlander shelf right here. And it's the Scottish Prisoner. But this one, this is hardcover too. I forgot where I come across this one. But this one is later on. So let me know if you've read any of these. Do I need to read them in order or just any time I can read in whatever order? Because I really don't know. And now for the last book. This is by Joanne Harris. She wrote the book Chuck a Lot, which I brag about all the time. I had never heard of this one, though. This is called Sleep Pale Sister. You can't see it very well. This is supposedly her second novel that she had ever written. So I'm glad to have this for my collection. She's an author that uh, I, I want to read more from. I, I do own several of her books. I've read several of her books, but I have many that I have not read from her. I still need to finish up the Chocolat series. Actually, there are four books in that. But I was so happy to find there. When, when I go to places like this, I have certain authors that I do look for. I was hoping to find uh, Interview with Vampire by Anne Rice, and they, they did not have very many Anne Rice books at all. I found some mass market paperbacks of The Witching Hour, which I already own that book, the hardcover anyway good book, by the way. Uh, and then I look for Sarah Addison Allen. I never see hers at thrift stores, though. Uh, there's a few of hers that I don't have that I would like to have. And um, I don't know, just various authors uh, that I look for when I go thrift store shopping. Well, anyway, I'm glad to add these to my collection. I have no clue where I'm going to put them. As I've been off this week, I'm trying to organize my books on the other side of the room now this looks good on the other side of the room oh my gosh <laughs> it's a disaster who okay that's uh yeah i still got a lot of work ahead of me okay let's do the tbr jar pick now and this will be the book that i'll be reading through the months july august september time anytime in that time okay uh see, how many do i have left anyway 
I don't remember. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Seven more books, which, okay, we'll see what this one is right here. I'm a little nervous because one of these I'm really <laughs> afraid to read. <laughs> I want to read it, but I don't. Let's see. Okay, we're good. <laughs> we're good. This one's going to be a reread. <laughs> it's Garden Spells by Sarah Addison Allen. And there it is. I think it was Jellicle that recommended this to me. It was either her or another year. Like I said, this is a reread. Um, I want to read the next book in the series, but I felt like it's been so many years ago since I've read this. I wanted to go back and reread this one beforehand. So I remember just really enjoying this. And at the time I had another coworker that enjoyed reading the same kind of books I did. So I passed it on to her and uh, that was the times I didn't keep my books. So this is one that I actually wound up rebuying to read. But isn't that lovely? Well, thank you for watching this cheap haul video. And I will see you soon with another one. Goodbye. Oh, one more thing. I want to show you my garden helper. Pepper, you're stepping on the stuff. You don't know any difference, do you? Come here. <laughs> Come here. you got to get out of there. Come on. Come on. Get your back leg up. Come on. Over here. There you go, big hunk of luck. I can't get any work done this way. No.